Hi, everyone. Uh, that's my best intro. That's all I've got. Thanks. finished that Zelda map and now I'm back in business. Gotta get these book covers done. So close to being done with Mr. Scola here. Running into this weird problem with the standard brush. I don't know what's causing it. If I use clay builder brush and I do a stroke, it's consistent all the way across, right? If I use the standard brush, that's what it's supposed to be like. But it seems like when it goes across other objects, even though I have them in transparent ghost mode, it still seems to do these little weird dips where it'll like fade out or something. If you're an awesome ZBrusher and know, have any idea what I'm talking about, uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong or weird. So I'm pretty much obliterating the texture that's on here as I as I add all these little. Um, bunched up folds where the quills come out of his skin and uh, just fine because I, I discovered I can just spray the, the texture over. Previously I had meticulously hand craft like done a stamp for like 8,000 times over here which was ridiculous. But, uh, once I get these secondary forms on there, the tertiary texture is, goes on really fast. So yeah. going across here. You can see it dips a little there. I think it has to do with the, um, oh, look at that. Yeah, so I have um, Dynamesh, a uh, slightly higher density mesh there. And so I think what's happening is whatever the additional forces that the, that the standard brush is applying, it's getting, um, diffused more by the uh, the additional polygons. That is my theory. And so the clay buildup must ignore that and it just does. Hmm. If I do that as opposed to doing this. Yeah, in general I just get to get worse results with the standard brush, but which is annoying because when you do the clay buildup brush, you do it, but then you have to smooth it back often several times. So I'm not gonna let it get me down. After all, this is a this is art and chill and positivity stream. Hello, Dottie. How's it going?
skin's getting kind of puckered up over this, but then it's also getting puckered up over this. Where does the, how does this part of the pucker resolve? That's always tricky. Still in that, still in that zone of talent where like, I'll find, I'll find a technique that works in most contexts, but then when I push it into unfamiliar contexts, the the logic of what I'm doing breaks down because I don't truly understand the fundamental um, forces at play. When, you know, skin is bunching up, but it's also being pulled on by these more rigid forms. Um, not to mention it's anchored to, you know, sinew and bone and stuff underneath there. Um, that's, that's one of those things where just practice pays off over time. And study. I could definitely use more study for this. Steam cleaning your carpet. Ooh, exciting. Someday we'll have to do that. Our carpet is thoroughly disgusting. We have two boys in this house for how long? Seven years? Was it kind of gross when it came in? Well, it looks fine, and then you know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> the cleaning actually made it worse. Yeah. Probably gross. Yeah. Mystery stains emerged. Ghost stains. Quills work. They, as far as I know, most quills in nature are modified hair follicles, modified hairs. Um, but this is an alien, and these quills could work almost any way we want. Um, I imagine the quills on porcupine. Um, not pork on puffer fish are not modified hairs because fish do not have hair, you guys. In that case, they're probably modified scales. Um, and they certainly don't attach to skeleton underneath. 
And that's what I'm wondering about this guy, if these these quills are actually attached to his rib cage in some way. I don't see when when he inflates like a puffer fish, all the quills go out. And depending on how big I want him to inflate. So if these these vertical elements here are his ribs, he's got a bird cage like rib ribs uh, structure. Um, and so everywhere where it's inverted between the ribs, it would go out because he, he inflates with uh, some kind of gas. Um, and the question is if these quills are attached to structure underneath that's more rigid, uh, it seems like they would not be sticking. You know, they, they might stick out, but then they wouldn't be um, exposed beyond like just the tips or whatever. So I think they have to be just scales that as the skin inflates, they're kind of just forced up and out, which is pretty much exactly like a puffer fish. Try the plate brush. You can do that. Hello, Alita. How's it going? Are you still uh, visiting family? to Heather. Oh, you just had Friday and Saturday. Where, where did you go for that run fair? Star, hello. What is this creature's role in the story? Um, he functions as a foil and a guide to the protagonist, Beaumark. It's kind of, they have um, some of the same goals and some different goals, but it turns out that working together get some to accomplish both of those. But, um, this little guy has the problem that um, his people more or less, well, they subvert or they covertly um, have a lot of control over the world and he knows it and Beaumark thinks that he's literally crazy. He doesn't understand how these tiny little people 
who are like the size of toddlers and everyone seems to ignore. He doesn't understand how these people control anything. And so he thinks he's basically got a crazy little monster following, following him around, but also helping him uh, with um, uh, knowledge because Beaumark is in strange areas where he knows nothing about and he really needs a guide. So. Next Sunday is your birthday. OMG. Mm-hmm. Can do anything exciting? Star says his aesthetic really does look like a guide. Hilariously enough, he reminded me of the owl in Ocarina of OOC. Hmm, that's not Ocarina of Time. Maybe you meant OOT. Uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to give him a a stern owl slash frog. He's an owl mixed with a frog, more or less. Also a pufferfish. Also many other things. What's funny is that um, Beaumark's people, Beaumark is the protagonist of the book, and his people have been on uh, an island where they've been hiding from the rest of the world for hundreds of years. And um, so his people only have vague memories of, of Scola here, of Scola's people, and their memories have kind of evolved into where they are um, like creatures who come in the night and eat naughty children. So, Beaumark's also having to deal with that psychological issue of like, every time he looks at this thing, he just sees, uh, you know, a monster he was, he was scared of as a kid. But, uh, Scola is motivated to, um, get back to Beaumark's homeland, because when he found out that, that the people, which is what they call themselves, Skola's people, um, aren't on that island. That's like a huge uh, win for him if he can be the first to, to colonize that island with his people. So he's, he's helping Beaumark out, uh, even though he's super annoyed by Beaumark most of the time, and vice versa, both for good reasons. That to me is is the best kind of drama is where um, two characters you can totally understand and relate why they feel the way they do, um, but they're at they're still at odds with each other. My mom did a really good job of making their relationship work like that. I think. We'll see if the critics agree when our book launches late this year or early next year. 
<laughs> AJ says, Serena and Anna are coming over this week. Michelle's B day is this Tuesday, and Serena's is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have to do a tiny, quiet party at my house on Thursday. Wow. That's a lot of birthdays. You guys should all get together and do some, like, huge, epic birthday, you know, like, mega merger birthday. That's sort of what they're doing, except... Well, she said teeny tiny, quiet. That's what they're like. Yeah. They're all together, but... everyone's party it's no one's party mm. think of that. yeah <laughs> I think it's better Aletha you don't do huge and epic oh I thought you guys would like go on a trip to uh, Las Vegas and go to like strip clubs and all get really drunk and do a bunch of drugs end up accidentally murdering someone that's what I assumed would happen am I wrong about that Or am I thinking of the hit film, The Hangover? Fear and Loathing, yep, that's another good one. <laughs> Just trying to think of everything that's completely the opposite of their style. to sculptress mode. Let me tell you what. Real partiers play a mean game of marbles. Marbles, wow. Now that I, I legitimately would be surprised by if you guys played marbles. My uh, friend has been surprising me by doing some uh, development on a marble rolling game uh, that I came up with uh, for a mobile a mobile game where you roll a little guy around like a marble and uh, but I, I added a twist where the the marble is a dude and he's a coward and he just wants to get away from all the bad things that you're trying to roll him into. So if you stop rolling him, then he'll get up and try to run towards the exit of the level. Because uh, no one cares. <laughs> so you guys are making it? Oh, I mean, Pat's been making stuff for it, so oh. that's awesome. Okay, so here's here's the, the cowardly hero, and so I've got this whole little intro thing where, like, you as the player, you play as the hand of fate, and so you're literally tilting the world to roll him around, and uh, these are all like different costumes and skins you could unlock. 
because it's a mobile game, so you have to have unlockable skins. It's just the rules. And so combat is you gotta like roll the little dudes into the bad guys. And uh, oh yeah, I had an idea for a whole like meta game with it. I mean, who knows what we'll do? But so yeah, like I was gonna have Victorian hedge maze type levels, like uh, Babylonian palace with sand, like a Zen bonsai garden, ice castle, and of course clockwork factory. Can't have marble rolling without a clockwork. This is base. It's basically like a practice game. I've got serious games that I think could actually be like have the potential to, uh, you know, become become a hit and actually make money. But first, I want to just make a little practice game that can figure out all the pipeline, figure out the communication strategy, make sure that we're good partners working together, like. All that kind of stuff before I get serious about anything. Also, you know, gotta finish a book. Gotta finish three books. And then, like, eight more. But hopefully, Mr. Shane will be online to uh, help us do art assets for games. And he could make a little money that way, too, if any of them ended up doing well. And if not, then he's got a cool, uh, games in his portfolio. The other uh, neat mechanic I thought of is um, it's got a squish and flick mechanic to where, you, so, so you're rolling them by tilting the phone or whatever, and then you can, oh, here's a phone, and then you could be like, squish them with your finger, and it'll like splat down on the floor, and then flick, and that'll shoot them off in a direction. Um, and the you can't just do that constantly though, because he has to be partially conscious in order to like break through barriers and roll roll quickly enough to damage enemies and, and break through walls and stuff. So. I like mechanics that are like balanced like that. If he's too conscious, he tries to run away. If he's not conscious enough, he can't he can't do what you need him to do. Yeah, it's, it would be for phones or tablets, or I suppose for a uh, Switch. You want that game? Yes, what? You can touch the screen on Switch. Yes, it has touch sensitivity. I suddenly I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Okay. Yeah, it would work. On Switch. I haven't really played my Switch since um, Shovel Knight, and on Shovel Knight, you don't, you don't touch the screen. scales are a little trickier. Mm, maybe they're not. So I've got all these areas where clearly there's a stamp and it falls off and I think I just need to like go in by hand and deepen some of these cracks between scales. And so, yeah. 
I'm saying yeah a lot, but that's okay. I'm not gonna judge myself. Um, I'm gonna have to blow out a lot of these scales by doing this. But since I'm gonna have to be going in and doing hand touch-ups all over the place anyway, I don't think it's a big deal. where I'm altering the geometry so much it's starting to really stretch out the polygons. Like here you can see it's really uneven. I need to get on the sculptress mode. Just add some more polygons. And Morta, how's it going? Pass your motorcycle class. Oh hi Josh. Oh, hi, Van Morda. You passed your motorcycle class, eh? Well, like I said last time, please don't die. So are you uh, riding your motorcycle right now while you uh, watch this Twitch stream, I hope? You're just, you're just holding your phone up in front of you while you zip around the streets of Paris? And Mortis sent chocolate cake. Which is the most important thing. Got your priorities straight, that's good. tried to integrate and what I was trying to do, which I think I'm going away from now, is I was trying to match the size of the little scales that I have built into the quills and then blend that into the rest of the skin. And I think that's just going to take way longer than it needs to. I think it, it looks fine, but I don't think it looks significantly better than this other faster method, so. Did the Halloween start stuff in Guild Wars? Um, you know, I only pay attention to dates when they're like, you have to have this thing done by this date. And the date I have to have things done is always 
like weeks or a month or more before the stuff actually launches. So I honestly don't know. I bet before Halloween. Probably before Halloween. We very rarely release our Halloween stuff after Halloween. <laughs> it's Halloween for Christmas. In Guild Wars, it's Winter's Day. Which, even that is not as... Uh, like you'd think, oh, we'll do Winter's Day so that we're, um, you know, apply to everyone. We're not, we're not being sectarian here and just celebrating Christmas. But then you realize, like, it's summer in half the world also when we have Winter's Day. Yep, we get to watch everyone rage. October 16th. and everything I have done already. I'm still almost done. And I did a little double roll in this. That's cool. Give him some pug rolls up here. Sometimes we play Guild Wars 2. Sometimes. I mean, I end up playing it every day, but uh, not usually uh, in the live game, sadly. Morty, you're playing Guild Wars 2 while you're riding your motorcycle while you're watching Twitch? That's amazing. It's amazing what motorcycles can do these days. done in the next week or two that means I'll hopefully 3d print him soon after that which will put me into the middle of October -ish. and then I'll just have Lilk to finish she's I think she's also almost done It's the, it's the 3D printing that's really going to be the trick of, like, how fast is that actually going to be for me. Certainly the first 
first couple times I do it, it's going to be awful. However, I do have lots of local friends who do 3D printing, so I shouldn't have trouble just like getting their assistance as needed. skin is doing this kind of foldy thing around the scales up here and then up here it just turns into melt and so I'm trying to decide if I need to just wipe that all out and I'm assuming I used stamps and then just kind of went in by hand and integrated flow between them That's the trouble with working on a thing on and off for years. You you lose your flow. <laughs> you can't can't remember what you were doing before. does it take to 3d print something usually what does the time variance depend on I have no clue on specifics hold on I'm gonna bundle up it is starting to get frigid in here um, I have no idea yet the only 3d printing I have done is um, doing uh, mailing it out to shapeways and then they send it back to me a couple weeks later But from forums and stuff I've been on, uh, and it depends on your printer too. Like I, I bought a, um, the kind that does liquid resin. So it's not, uh, most, most printers that average people buy are the ones that have like a spool of plastic thread and it has a nozzle that goes back and forth. The, the type I got is for really high resolution stuff. So it can only do stuff about the size of this phone. Um, and there's like a plate and another thing on top of it that just rises up and every time it rises up a little bit the screen underneath goes poof and does some light that cures the resin in a particular shape and so it just rises up and down and up and down and up and down and it takes however long it takes um, and the the other big factor from what I can tell from uh, other people's reports is how well you set up the file like you can there's lots of mistakes you can make in in how you set up the file for the printer and the settings of the printer for the particular kind of resin you're using so there's just all sorts of obnoxious new things i'm going to have to learn which is annoying but in the long term it's definitely going to be worth it Star says, I have a few friends who print armor pieces for cosplay, but they never went in depth about the printing process. Yeah, if they're printing large sizes like that, they're using the, the cheaper kind of printer. Well, I guess it's not necessarily cheaper, but generally they're much cheaper. Uh, and they could do they could do a lot bigger things too. Like to get a to get one that can do the super high resolution resin. Um, out of you know size larger than a cell phone um those are like many 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 thousands of dollars like 10 20 30,000 uh, sadly i don't have that laying around for some reason i don't know why
Marketing order says it could take hours for a small item or days for a larger, depending on how empty or strength you want inside for support. Yep, lots of different settings. Uh, the 3D printing I'm doing is um, just gonna be to, to make a, a master piece that I will then cast, or make a mold of and then cast. So I don't think strength is going to be a big issue for me, which means it'll probably go a little bit faster. Uh, on the other hand, I'm going to want the absolute like maximum detail possible. So from what I can tell, that just takes a lot of practice, figuring out the settings that optimally work for your machine, for the mo particular model, for the particular resin you're using, et cetera, et cetera. with all the rest it's not that out of order I mean it's it's kind of good to have anomalies on biological creatures because that just tends to be a part of biology Van Morty you know there's no drinking on this stream got to be at full sobriety. This is, a, this is a, a family stream. I will not have your drunken debauchery. Hey Brimstar, thanks for stopping by. Uh, either have fun at work or do your best to not be miserable at work, depending on what your work is. If your work is uh, interrogating criminals or something, I hope you don't have fun because then you'd probably be a sadist or something. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of other jobs where it would just be inappropriate to have fun. Maybe like a suicide prevention hotline. Oh, I imagine you could feel satisfaction with that, but not fun. borderline would be like an ER doctor or something where you could probably have fun saving people's lives um, but you wouldn't be like Woo! the whole time that'd be weird although now I kind of want to end up in an ER where the doctor's just like yelling like he's on a, uh, a roller coaster the whole time while saving me that'd be, that'd be pretty amusing You tired today because being social is exhausting. I agree with that, Aletha. I agree with both social being exhaust uh, exhausting and being exhausted right now. I went to a uh, a taco party last night. Got very crowded and very loud. like I want to go so we went home and uh, watched uh, Westworld we watched the the catch-up for Westworld season one and the things that it said so we watched it whenever I don't know actually 
I feel like we watched it after everyone, so we watched it relatively recently, maybe six months ago, okay? The stuff they said in the recap was like, what? Are you, what? What? Really? Like, neither of us picked up on the biggest, most like massive twist reveals that there were. So I was like, I think we just need to watch season one again now that we now that we know that's what's going on. And it's a way more satisfying experience. <laughs> so we're, we're watching through season one again. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Westworld is... I want to say probably the best produced, best looking, best directed, best acted show on television ever. I'm going to go out on, on a limb there and say those things. Um, I don't know how much it would trigger your anxiety. There's a lot of really bad people doing a lot of really bad things in it. got lots of horses. If you, if you like them horsies, you'll see lots of horsies. Bad things in shows don't usually cause a lot of anxiety. Oh, okay, cool. I thought uh, when we tried watching um, Stranger Things, when you guys were over here, you were not enjoying that. Or was that one of your sisters? Or multiple of your sisters? Oh, that was Janae. Okay. You love Stranger Things? Excellent. tempted to say that you should watch the recap of season one before you watch season one at all just be <laughs> just because of how stupid I felt that I missed like the biggest thing about it but yeah I don't know generally you should not spoil twists for yourself but this is one of those things where I'm like they would have spelled it out more clearly, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. It, they probably did spell it out clearly, it's just that it's in the middle of so much stuff going on, so many threads and so many characters and like, you know, one thing happens in one episode and then like four episodes later, what they did suddenly becomes significant and you're like, wait, what happened four episodes ago? I don't... I'm glad you still love your sister regardless of her tension issues. How's she doing? I haven't seen any um, Facebook updates from her recently. I don't even know how long she's supposed to be in Japan. adventure she's going on. Really cool.
doing good. She's an assistant teacher for three classes a day, three or four, something like that. Cool. Do you know how long she's supposed to be there? She streams on YouTube. Oh, okay, not on Twitch. She wants to stay another year when the time comes, but each contract is one year. Hopefully she stays another year so I can go visit. Yeah, that would be cool. I definitely need to visit Japan at some point since I spent so many formative years growing up there. I haven't been back since, what, like 1982 or 3, whenever I left. so I can run off to New Zealand and then Japan. And then I'll tell your parents, sorry, I'm living in Hobbiton now. <laughs> I don't think anyone can live there yet. At some point, someone's going to build actual livable Hobbiton houses for people to buy. about these bridges that can go yeah I don't think they can go straight like that um because sometimes I want them to drape a little bit and halfway between draping and like 
the pull-up thing is straight, and that just looks wrong. roll over them. When you're a billionaire author, you'll have a Zelda map yard around a hobbit house. That sounds nice. Uh, when you're a billionaire author, they'll probably have 3D printers that can print something life-size like that. I mean, they're, they're already 3D printing houses using, um, like, giant arm things and uh, drones that are able to go and like deposit material on walls. African uh, man, sadly, whatever uh, your name is, you guys got to see this. Look at that color. Can you read that? I sure can't. Oh, there we go. African diva. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. I, uh, I did not assign that color to your name. And welcome. Incredibly bright neon green African Diva fire. side areas between like underneath the arm the armpit it's probably a good place for the skin to be shearing um, as opposed to simply draping don't know why I feel that way but
good idea, Zebra. Way to think for me. Sometimes it's good to save your project. What percentage do I get of money from people subscribing to your channel? Uh, on Twitch, it's big diddy percent. Diddy diddy. Not the best deal. Not the worst deal. Just the deal. The real money is when you uh, when you get a or multiple um, sponsor, and you just talk about mattresses or whatever every half hour. Or, uh, well, a lot of a lot of people on Twitch are sell sell games, and then they get a portion of the game. You know, they're playing Fortnite or whatever, and if you buy Fortnite through their little portal, then they get some percentage of that. Yes, it is more than zero. It is more than zero percent. I still have not breached the threshold in all of my months of Twitch streaming to where they actually send me a payment. <laughs> It's slowly accruing. It's probably $50 or whatever is the point at which they will actually put money in my account. Buying the bits from Twitch itself, so I don't think they take. I, I, I think I get 100% of whatever the bits are worth that you give me because they already take their portion when you buy it. When you buy the bits, I think. Let's just say I'd like to think. I missed this row over here.
Hey, Van Morta, thanks for 80 cheers. Let's see if they drop in my little cup. Oh, here they come. Bink, binkity. I suppose uh, if uh, being tipsy on white Russians gets you to to uh, donate, I should I should encourage you to drink more. bits through watching the ads. Oh, nice. <coughs> I get money and you get to ignore ads. It's a perfect crime. We would have got away with it, too. Well, who knows? Maybe we will get away with it. found out the other day that um, these videos I had watched on, I don't know, I think they were on YouTube. No, I think they were on um, Facebook. Someone posted them. And they were like Tim and Eric, uh, which like half of Tim and Eric's skits are fake commercials, right? So I just thought it was more funny fake commercials. But uh, the other day a friend told me that those are actually commercials for an actual product and I thought that was amazing that I had been spending my time watching a uh, commercial because it was by uh, people that I think are funny. So long, my little uh, foot heater turned off. I hate winter so much. I hate fall. I hate winter. Spring is okay just because it means summer is coming. Don't tell Heather because she loves fall and winter. But I'm literally, mm, not literally, well, I want to say 90% of my waking hours during fall and winter, I'm uncomfortable. And who wants to live that way? Not me. Like, my office is always just ridiculously freezing. My house is either regulated to the point where it gets too hot and stuffy or it's too cold and I have to wear ridiculous wizard robes to stay warm and then getting up and down off the couch is a huge pain in the butt because I'm all cocooned up you guys my life is so hard so hard you guys
I just want to live in a place where it's exactly 70 degrees, partly cloudy, with a very slight cool breeze at all times. I don't see why that's too much to ask. Yes, poor me. Piling blankets is fine, except then getting up and down is a pain, and uh, still, like, either my nose will be cold, and you can't put a blanket over your nose unless you want to, like, half suffocate. Oh yeah, it was like that yesterday at Ren Fair. Nice. I wish I was at that Ren Fair. Like right now, now that I turned the heater back on, my toes are getting warm again. But like, now my shoulder's cold, so I need to put my stupid snuggly wuggly thing up there. And still, the back of my neck is cold. I need to stop complaining. I went to it was blistering hot and rather miserable. Yeah, actually same here. We went to one last year. I think it was last summer. And yeah, I didn't know how that like there were people in full armor doing like combat and stuff. I was like, oh, it was so bad for you. Hey thanks, Michelle. 100 to cheers. Okay, let's watch him go in the cup. Here we come. But it's just one thingy. What? I think 100 would be more than one thingy. I got a rainbow dollar.
area seems to be successful. Like a, a good treatment. So it's got larger scales puckering around them and then it kind of folds the skin up around it. So one does take me to do that treatment on each of these. Fold lines in first, or scales in the top lines. Let's see, how am I resolving this pattern? It kind of goes in a circle around. Okay, so I start with a kind of rounded, moundy thing, like so. And then I sketch in some lines of moon right here and there. And I don't need to polish I don't think I need to polish it. Yeah, dude, uh, I was just complaining about how non-cozy I was, so, um, but, you know, I am wearing a, a Snuggy. I think it's called a Snuggy. We're at the awkward phase where we haven't turned on the heater in the house. Um... Because, I mean, technically, it's not even close to winter. But I really feel like I want to. Also, how's it going? Yeah, dude. Actually, it's kind of, it looks kind of like cosplay for Scola here. I think I've got all the little folds and bundles and wrinkles and stuff. That's it. I'm cosplaying Scola. Oh, 
what's going on here? It looks like I have negative. Oh. You know what? While I'm here, let's get our scale pattern. Which I believe I was smart enough to actually put in the Scola folder. Nope, not that Scola folder. That's weird. Do I have another one? Where does this guy live? Art projects, test, illustration. And then illustrations. wasn't smart enough to put it in the right place. Instead, I must put it in alphas. Scale. I was smart enough to name it Scola Bumps. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely, ah, it's definitely fall weather out here. I'm not spilling on my electronics. No. It's the second time I've dumped my cup in like 24 hours. And I don't think I can remember the last time I've dumped a cup of liquid. Hopefully that doesn't mean I'm coming down with some disease. Crisp and cool outdoors here on the East Coast. Good day to relax with the windows down and a good book. Possibly one by AJ Baki. Nice. Product placement for the win. I'm going to be doing that out the wazoo once my book is out. Holy crap. You guys are going to get super annoyed. It's going to be great. I'm going to find a way to work it into every conversation. Possibly every sentence. Hey, yeah, dude. Thanks for the 20. For how cozy I look. Okay. <laughs> well, my mama always said I had skills. I didn't realize one of them was looking cozy. I get uh, money from the cheers, so I, mm, is cheers different than bits? I, now I don't know. Suddenly I don't know. Uh, the, I know, wait, have you ever bought bits on Twitch? I guess that's the question. My understanding is you cheer with bits. I don't, but I don't know enough to know if you can cheer without bits. You cheer using bits. Okay. So yeah, whatever you bought, um, Twitch takes their amount and then pay, gives you however many bits. I can't remember what it is. I bought like $20 worth of bits at some point. And I think it's like a penny a bit, more or less. is what you end up with and yeah so when I cheer for people I say cheer and then a number and then I always mess it up because I put a space between the cheer and the number and then I just look like a moron and then I do it without the space and I do a real cheer and I take some money out of my bits or some bits out of my account which I paid money for. Whew! 
That was that was rough to get through. Probably hard to hear too, and I apologize for that. Every 100 bits you cheer, the streamer makes one dollar. Yes. Yeah, I was just talking about my massive monetization on here that. Um, I've been streaming for however many months and I still haven't reached the threshold where they send me any money. But that's fine. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the glorious fame. Hey, thank you, Michela. And for the puppy head, too. You guys are the bestest. Uh, all right, all right, send it down now. Don't throw all your money away on uh, the Josh Foreman stream. <laughs> At this rate, uh, you're going to give me all that money that I gave you for a massage that one time. Or did I give you a fiver or something? Van Mortis says you can throw money at him. Oh my god, you guys. I feel like a, um, one of those uh, lady folks who uh, dances around a cylindrical metal object. Worth every penny, thank you. Oh, that's right. Put your arms back, get in my way, so that then I can go in here and do this thing I'm trying to do. Yeah, instead I'm a, I'm a dude with an awesome hair and a Snuggie. That's pretty much the same as um, dancing entertainers. Next month when I get more bits, I'll cheer you, Van Morta, if you got a Twitch. All right, we're working deals now. got twitch just not partner or anything oh yeah you can't get cheers until you're a partner right or not partner affiliate i am not a partner you have to have like an average of i think it's something like 75 viewers <laughs> to to even apply for a uh, partner status, which is obviously never going to happen for me.
I want the larger scales from the back. To blend in two smaller ones around the bottom of the armpit, I think. Yeah, and now that uh, Twitch is, I don't know if they've done this yet, but they have, they keep talking about rolling out different categories. Because right now they've got pretty much like gaming, uh, real life or whatever, and then uh, the miscellaneous bucket of creative. Um, but they're gonna be breaking that down into subcategories. It seems like then would be a good time to be like, Okay, so if you want to be an affiliate in gaming, you have to have these stats. If you want to be an affiliate in, you know, IRL, you have to have these stats. And in, you know, the more art stuff, let's let's be reasonable and put what, you know, most awesome artists actually have and make that be the thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I do not pretend to understand their business model. Yeah, dude says they're adding the ability to tag your content for better SEO and are rolling out new categories as well. Got the email on Friday. Glad they're trying to make the platform better. Yeah, one of the one of the quirky things that is upsetting a lot of people and me, it just makes me giggle, is uh, their, their categories. They have things like um, painting or art or something like that. Uh, or under art, they have certain things such as painting. Uh, but then sculpture is listed under uh, craft and hobby. <laughs> so it's like, what? Well, why is it? And leatherworking, other things like that as well are under craft and hobby. So it's just a, this funny idea like, okay, so. So. Uh, Raphael was an artist until he did sculpture and then he was a hobbyist or you know Donatello uh, Michelangelo did the David as a uh, as a hobby it was, it was just kind of craft you know he went to Michael's and was like hey, give me a giant block of marble I've got an idea for a craft I want to make But yeah, no matter how you divide up your your content or your concept, you're gonna make some people mad. So I don't take it personally. Cheers for categorizing Renaissance artists. I was actually referring to the Ninja Turtles. So.
Oh, 20 for categorizing the Ninja Turtles. Nice. I'm glad you're uh, open-minded about what to cheer for. Got a lot of free bits to use. Oh, nice. Uh, do you just like put on a bunch of commercials and walk away or something? of Jack Ryan while a promo was running. Oh, okay, nice. We just watched the last episode of Jack Ryan last night. I don't know if I really like that show. It's kind of fine. Reminds me a lot of 24. And I like 24. like like it just in general like a show has to do an awful lot to win me over if it's not a fantasy or science fiction show I think is what it comes down to and it's got to do like quintuple work if it has anything to do with a uh, gangster or terrorists I just I just don't care at all about those subjects horror movies. I like very, I'm very picky about horror movies. I don't care for the kind that just startle you. I don't even consider that horror. Um, I don't like prolonged depictions of torture. Uh, gore doesn't bother me at all. Um, Sexual violence, in general, disturbs me to the point where, yeah, I don't, I'm not interested. Uh, yeah, so the the horror that I like the most is usually sci-fi oriented. You know, Alien. Um, my favorite horror movie that I've seen recent in recent years has been The Vavitch. The, uh, the atmosphere. I, I like slow burn movies that are just very atmospheric. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was definitely my favorite in a long, long time. I hear that heredity is good in a lot of those same ways. So I'll be checking that out at some point. <coughs> How about you? What kind of horror movies do you like? Uh, a lot of people don't like The Witch because it's boring. It's like, yeah, if, like, what you want is to be startled. 
then uh, yeah, it's pretty boring. And people talking in like legitimate 15th century accents is, <laughs> is probably a huge turnoff for a lot of uh, horror fans. I also, I'm not generally a fan of uh, ghost movies. Recently got into David Lynch, specifically his series Rabbits. It's incredibly unsettling, awesome sound work, brilliantly eerie lighting, and no gore. Uh, I have not heard of Rabbits. I've, I mean, I'm familiar with David Lynch, obviously, from. Wait. Lynch is Twin Peaks, right? Um, or am I getting him confused with someone else? Uh, Twin Peaks and Eraserhead and... No, I can't remember the other ones. Uh, yeah, you can put links. Did I watch Extinction on Netflix? I have not heard of Extinction. What is that about? Eraserhead is super disturbing. I'm trying to think if he also did Naked Lunch. That's another one that's super disturbing. Um, although it's not as disturbing because there's not a deformed baby that's screeching at the top of its lungs constantly. Invaders attack, but they jump around and you learn the past of characters. It's sci-fi horror. Okay, I'll have to check that out. We just started Westworld season one for the second time. So I'll add it to the list. There's actually quite a few on my backlog now. I, I still got to do uh, Dark... Uh, no, not... not uh, what is the, the film noir in space one? That's a little harder sci-fi than most. The uh, sci-fi channel dumped and then someone else picked it up. Netflix or some other streaming service picked it up. Okay, I'll pop up this link and keep it here. Is Rabbits, is it a newer thing? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Lynch is a really interesting, interesting dude, for sure. He's so the opposite of me in the way that he doesn't want to talk about what his art means. Like, he actually finds it offensive that people ask him to tell them <laughs> what his art means. He's like, that's supposed to be what you figure out. And I'm all like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk for an hour and a half about what this one stupid doodle I made means. So it's always interesting when artists have such different um, thoughts on what art is and should be and... Definitely like the Twin Peaks. I have not seen Firewalk with me yet. We're we've got to watch the third season of Twin Peaks still. I was thinking we should probably watch Firewalk with me before we do that. It's not Dark Matter or Killjoys, but it was. It came out around the same time. called I'll never know sorry everyone watching on YouTube who knows but don't worry it, it's written down on my list so it's not like I'm gonna forget it 
I saw the first, like, one or two episodes. I'm not a huge fan of film noir, but I am a fan of hard sci science fiction. And it's harder than anything else on TV. So, I definitely need to give it another go. says, my understanding is Lynch got his first digital camera, and when he realized he didn't have to spend money on film, he got experimental and made rabbits. <laughs> All the characters speak at non sequiturs. Oh, cool. The Expanse. That's the one. Thank you. Four thousand five hundred fifty hearts. Wow, Van Morta. You can manipulate me so much with those hearts now. You can force me to like your Facebook page and follow you on Instagram and follow you on Twitter. I think I think with that many hearts you could even make me clean your bathroom. I can't remember what the various rewards I said in there are, but that might be one of them. Already got you on Facebook. Yeah, that's true. Says the opening of Rabbits reminds me of Goodnight Moon. I don't know what Goodnight Moon is. Is that a book? A kids' book? more but bought Facebook like isn't that great how you can buy people liking something of yours <laughs> it's hilarious again nothing like the uh, pretty ladies who dance around cylindrical metal objects on stage nothing like I'm guessing the laugh track in Rabbits is purposefully obnoxious based on what I know of Lynch. He's probably using it as satire. And Mortis says you can buy Twitter likes and such. It's very cheap. Instagram is cheap too, like 1k for 5 bucks. Um, hmm. Does that help you be seen by more people? I did a, uh, I promoted one of my Instagram posts and ended up with like a 1500 likes I want to say. 
but it cost me twenty dollars so I mean I don't care about likes per se I care about people being like oh let's check this guy out and then oh look he's got a book I let's buy it that's what I care about so I don't know if those likes translate to that in any way Basically, everything is constantly changing, and so people come up with their techniques for how to promote themselves and others, and then everything in the algorithms change out from under them, and everyone's trying outdated things, and then random new things will work because the algorithm is randomly different, and then they'll become the new gurus to follow for the next 15 minutes until everything changes again. That is my impression of the social media commercial atmosphere. Morty says it's a herd mentality. If lots of people like it, then it, then you might as well like it. So it's weird, but it works. A really great uh, video with a laugh track is one where they took, um, uh, what's that, what's that nerd sitcom where they make fun of nerds and all the guys are nerds, um, whatever that one is, so that there's several videos where they've taken the laugh track out of it and it's like really awkward and just shows how like not funny it is anyway big bang theory yes uh, but there's also one where they magnify the laugh track and it just keeps going and going and going for like i don't know five minutes and gets louder and louder and louder <laughs> until you can't hear anything they're saying that is great that's high art right Yeah, I tried going back and watching uh, Faulty Towers recently, the BBC show from the 80s. And no, that laugh track is... It's not just a matter of volume, because it is very loud, but it's also a matter of um, pitch. Like, it sounds like it's cackling from hell. Like, it just... Scr there. I don't know if it's the high end or the low end or both, but something on there just literally physically hurts to hear it. Yeah, I tried watching an episode of Big Bang Theory and I could not get through it. It's very sitcom-y. It's just, it's um, like, I feel like my intelligence is being insulted when a laugh track goes off when I'm not personally laughing. I, I assume most people feel that way. Like, it, it's offensive, you feel like you're being manipulated. Although, I don't know, maybe it is just weird to me because I feel the same way about cheerleaders. I'm like, shut up. If I'm excited, I'm excited. Like, you bouncing around and waving things doesn't make me more excited. And I don't understand, well, I don't understand sports at all, so really I should just shut up about the whole topic. IT crowd, yes, I keep being told that. We watched one episode. It was like, okay. Um, I know shows a lot oftentimes have to grow on you, so I plan on giving it another go. I know enough people who say it's amazing that I need to just give it another go.
we just finished uh, Battlestar Galactica recently, and uh, my son Shane stopped watching it after a couple episodes. He couldn't handle the fact that they said frack for the F word. That just He said it just took him out of it. <laughs> it's like, huh. Of all the things. Yeah, dude says, I feel like Big Bang Theory does a piss poor job of representing nerd culture. All the jokes are just, hey, they're nerds, what losers, right? Sometimes the jokes are just built on them saying unnecessary science terms. Yeah. And just being... I was gonna say, like, my perception is that they're just awful people in general, but then there are plenty of sitcoms that I like. Seinfeld is a primary example. Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is like the modern example where the joke is that they're, they're just terrible people. And look how outrageous it is that they're so terrible. And that's pretty much the core kind of structure of most of the jokes, which when you break it down that way really isn't funny, and I don't know why I find it funny, but... I guess I find outrageous things funny. But they have to be the right kind of outrageous. Yeah, humor is hard. Sheldon is insufferable. I think I know the one you're talking about. Burnham is where it's at, as far as nerd comedy, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know that I've heard that name. Who is that? Is that a show, or a character, or a comedian? When it comes to nerd humor, I've always been a fan of John Hodgman, um, Patton Oswalt, Those are the ones who spring to mind. He's a comedian, young, his shows are very pull back the curtain on the entertainment industry. Whose line is it anyway? I have certainly guffawed many times at that show. Okay, let me add Bo Burnham to my list of comedians to check out. Okay, I've definitely seen him before. I don't know on what. Oh, he does music. Okay, I think, I think Heather's watched quite a bit of his stuff. Is it anyway? This 
like, I have no idea when that show was on the air, or if I've only seen reruns, or, like, I don't remember ever watching it. Why? But I, I've seen it plenty. But it's pr production value, camera, whatever, like, it makes me feel like it's a show from the late 80s, early 90s, but I'm sure it's not. Uh, it's the same as, um... That, what's that high school show with Screech? Like, that came out after I was too old for it. Um, Saved by the Bell. Like, I literally thought that was a show from the from the mid-80s. Just because of the way it looked. And then was shocked to find out, like, it went into the 2000s or something. Uh, 98 to 2007. Okay. So yeah, I must have seen it when it was live on a channel at some time. I guess it's just one of those shows I never went out of my way to watch, but I ended up seeing plenty regardless. But yeah, it was funny. Uh, people being able to, to make clever jokes on the fly is always kind of a fun thing to behold. It's like comedy stunt work. And Mortis says, I once tried to make uh, Abbott and Costello who's on first joke with my nephew and he did not get it. I failed as an uncle. No, no, you see, that's succeeding as an uncle. Making references to old shows and movies that the kids haven't seen. That's like a rite of passage for unclehood. You're one step closer to dad jokes. I mean, the, the other thing an uncle is good for is, like, turning you on to old shows and movies you would not have seen before. Like, my uncle, Paul, uh, he introduced me to Mad Max. Like, yeah, that's something my parents just never would have. And, man so awesome so your job is to find stuff that your brother or sister uh, your 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 uncle duties is to is to know what they don't like and don't want their kids to see and find a way to get them to see it I mean kid appropriate naturally slightly not too kid appropriate. I guess that's kind of the the other role of uncle is to is to like, hey, here's an R-rated movie your parents won't let you watch, <laughs> but it's so good you need to see it anyway. Abbott and Costello um, don't hold a candle to. Uh, what's the other duo, duo around that same time? Um, Laurel and Hardy. Those are my favorites. If you've never seen the skit where uh, Laurel and Hardy are trying to get a piano up these stairs delivered to an apartment. Oh my god. Do a Google search for Laurel and Hardy piano delivery and tell me that you're not dead afterwards. I also really like the Marx Brothers. Duck Soup is an amazing movie. For me, uh, there's this weird black hole of comedy that happens in the, like, I wanna say 50s through 70s, where Nothing from that era is funny to me. That's like the, the days of Jerry Lewis, um, Mel Brooks, uh, which I know that's sacrilege to say I don't like Mel Brooks, but man, I don't like Mel Brooks. Uh, and I, I feel like, well, a Abbott and Costello are a little earlier than that, but they still, they probably blazed trails that led to that. So that may be, and also, honestly, I have not seen a lot of their work. I'm familiar with who's on first. 
Um, I've seen like clips of them in their monster movies where they have the crossover with the Wolfman or whatever. So yeah. Then Mortis says, I like Pin and Teller the Magic Duo. Even when they explain the act, I'm still like, uh, I didn't follow. Yep. I agree. Pin and Teller are awesome. Have you seen their show? They have a show where magicians try to do tricks that they can't figure out how they did. Is it called Fool Me? It might be called Fool Me. Uh, but yeah, that's super good. You should check it out. Mr. Stump Dude is saying, Dad, when are you going to make games? Uh, I was just talking about that earlier, actually. My friend Pat started... He made the first... Um, part of the marble rolling game. He got it working to where he could tilt the screen, roll it around, squish the little guy on the ground, and then flick him. So, anytime you want to start making art for that, do it. Pin and Teller's Fool Us. That's the one. Great show. Apparently, uh... Pin Gillette made a movie that came out this year or last year that I'd never heard about that looks really interesting. I saw it reviewed on the uh, Red Letter Media year in review uh, video. It looks, looks worth looking into if you're a fan of his. Which I generally am. That dude says, I remember because the trophy says F you. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Mr. Stump Dude says, I just got Alpha Blender 2.8 and it's amazing. Oh, cool. Good, good. Have you still not figured out how to get footage out of it into After Effects? shocked if it's actually difficult. And Mortis says, I really like the TV show they did called BS. Yeah, that was, I like that show too. It was, I don't know, it's, it's a little, like in retrospect, now that I'm older, I can look back and say they were not, they were doing straw men quite often in their arguments. Um, to make it maximally entertaining, the stuff they had to call BS on had to be, like, really stupid, right? Um, it can't be, like, a nuanced thing of, like, oh, well, they kind of have a point about this, but maybe they're going too far here. Um, so, like, in a way, it was a prototype for the, the social cultural position we're in now, where everyone thinks everyone who disagrees is evil and stupid. And I'm just not a fan of that anymore. Not a fan of stupid. No, stupid people are fine. I mean, literally 49% of the population is less than average intelligence. And so having a policy that like stupid people are bad and we should get rid of them, that's just not, not a viable way to think about life. Yeah, stupid people especially believe that. <laughs> Yeah, dude says, I like when Pin was in Hackers. He wasn't funny, he just loved the movie. Oh, I didn't know he was in that. I haven't seen that since it came out in what, like 97 or something? Mr. Stump Dude says, can't do that, but I'm learning nodes and animation. Awesome. Animating is really fun. And bringing stuff to life. Van Mortis says, they said they always wanted to do a show on themselves. Oh, a BS show on calling, calling BS on themselves. Ben 
that would be cool. Mr. Stump Dude said, see, most people say that 50% is below average. Hack the planet. Yeah, be a hacktivist. And Morta says, if only people cuddled more, it'd be a happier place. <laughs> That's probably true. A lot of people make it really difficult to want to uh, be cuddled, though. Like, look at this guy. Would you would you want to cuddle him? It would probably be painful. Yeah, dude says I gotta head off and get some work done, but fun hanging with everyone. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, yeah, dude. Always a pleasure. Thanks for the cheers as well. Have a good productive afternoon. You'd hold them upside down and shake until the money fell out. I don't know how how well that would work out for you. Considering that uh, he can inflate and spike you with his spines, he can spit toxic venom in your face, and he could probably tear you gashes where you would bleed to death with his claws. Oh, thanks for the exiting cheer. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Have a good one, yeah, dude. Upside down in a chain mail bag <laughs> with a hammer. Okay, that might work. First, you'd have to get him in that bag, but... My little headache is developing into a migraine, and I could probably use some food and probably watch episode three of season one of Westworld. Sounds like a better plan than fighting off this migraine. So I'm going to call up for today, and thank you all for coming. Thank you for the abnormally large amount of cheers y'all gave me, and. Um, it's been super fun talking to you all, and um, I was I was gonna say, oh, I should do a call of action, like go to my website, but my website's totally broken right now because I'm trying to transfer it over from Breath of Life Art to Breath of Life Dev, and wouldn't you know it, uh, everything breaks when you try to do anything. So there you go. Don't do that. But you can check me out on Facebook, Breath of Life Art, on the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just see you guys on Wednesday. It was fun hanging. Bye.